Hello. Welcome to Just Kidding Around. Uh, by now you can probably tell I'm not Diane Miller. Diane was feeling a little bit tired, so we put her behind camera three, and I usually operate camera three. My name is Jim Elder, and tonight we have a guest by the name of Jerry Julian, and he's a fellow modeler like me, and he's brought some tools of the trade so we can look at uh, how, uh, how we can build the models that you see in front of us. Hello, Jerry. Hello, Jim. I think we're supposed to do a hello to. Oh yes, Mr. I forgot. Feeney, yes, the Mr. hallmark. Yeah. Yes, the hallmark of Diane's show. Uh, show is we have to say hello, Mr. Feeney. Yes. Okay. <laughs> she never does tell us exactly what that means, but we go along with that. Yes. Now we can say hello, welcome, Jerry. <laughs> what I'd like to do tonight is to um, uh, show you some uh, techniques and some tools of the trade. The last time that Diane and I did a show, we talked about making some uh, resin castings. So what I thought I'd do is bring some materials in and show you how we do uh, resin castings. Now the reason we do resin castings is that many times uh, we'll have parts that we want to duplicate more than once. And it used to be that we'd sit down and we'd have to make each part over and over again. Uh, now all I have to do is make one master part and then pull a mold, and I brought a couple of molds here. This is a two-piece mold which actually makes the parts for this. I'll just open this up. If Steve can get a shot of that. That's a two-piece mold for making the parts for this jet drive right here. And this went on a model that was uh, built for a uh, company in Tacoma that builds the full-size uh, ferry boats. Mm -hmm. And these are the new high-speed jet boats. So. This is the final unit here, and then this is the mold for making the part. And as you can see, it's somewhat complicated in its design, but I was able to make about 15 of these from the mold. Mm -hmm. What is the mold, first of all? What is it? This it looks is, like it's rigid, is it? Is. No, it is. It's a flexible rubber material. It's an, what we call an RTV material, room temperature vulcanizing rubber. Mm -hmm. And it's flexible, so we can actually cast the part, and then we can just flex it apart and get the part out. And uh, I brought a couple other molds. And these last a long time? Do uh, I them? can usually get from 50 to 100 parts out of a mold. Oh, okay. So I always keep the master in case something happens. This is one for a radar dome. And this is the mold that makes the body for this capson, which is the uh, anchor which is going on a model that I'm building right now. Mm -hmm. This is the finished one here. And again, because we wanted to make quite a few of these and I had friends that have boats. Um, I decided to make the master and then pull the mold. So what we're going to do right now is show you how we make a casting because if we start now it should be finished by the time we okay. get finished with the show. <clears throat> so these are materials. Once you get the mold made it's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. It's just you know, one of these old part A, part B equal amounts. So we have a mark on the inside so I take part A and we'll take part B here, shake it up. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> yes, I know that. <laughs> <Yeah>. Well, well, <laughs> I forgot to open it up at all. Oh, yeah. well. It we'll try it later. We'll see if we can get that. How do you usually get that open when it doesn't <laughs> With a pair of vice grips. <laughs> <laughs> I should okay. check that at home. Anyway, that's sitting there. Anyway, you pour that into the, uh, into the mold, and then in about 20 minutes, you have. A finished part. Does it look like that? It kind of looks like this material when it's yeah. when it's finished. Yeah. Actually, here's a okay. here's a casting here. This okay. is the material when it's so finished. So when you it's mix them together, it's white. Then when it freezes, it turns color. Right. When it yeah. when it okay. goes off or when it uh, solidifies, then you end up with this white uh, material, and you can yeah. machine it, you can paint it, do whatever yeah. you want. Okay. That would come right out of that mold. So then. that would come right out of that mold mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. That's where. And you make some very detailed parts with this too. You can look at very close. You can see little pin size detailing on it. Right. And that's why we want to make the masters um, as close to the original part as far as the miniatures we can because mm -hmm. every little detail that's in the master will be reproduced here. Mm -hmm. In fact, the company that makes the RTV molding material, they take a uh, 33 uh, phonograph record and they take the silicone and they actually pour it and make a mold they make a casting from that, and they can actually get some, some sound from that casting. So, oh, okay. We also um, had some people asking about um, beginner models, 
And this is one that I brought. This is a very simple little dory. And this is the finished model here when you're all finished with it. And uh, it's a fairly Did simple model to build. Yeah. yeah. That's from this kit. Yes, oh, okay. uh, because basically all you need is a one of these little exacto type knives. And mm -hmm. I like to get the one that has the little extension on the side because it keeps it from rolling off the desk. So you can see it keeps the thing from rolling off the desk and hitting oh, your foot or okay. whatever. That's one of the necessary tools. Right. Yeah, right. And <laughs> it's probably the most basic tool, number 11 uh, exacto blade in there. And of course, this is similar to uh, when you go into your basic uh, um, discount store and your kids see the swing set mm -hmm. and they say yes, so you decide to bring the, or buy the sing, uh, swing set. And then you go down and pick it up, and it ends up in a box like this with all sorts of parts. Well, this is the actual kit itself. It just comes with a set of plans and some basic materials. And then by following the plans and the procedures and a couple nights, you have a... It looks like it even comes with a base or something. Right. Yeah, that one okay. has the base. For a display of the model. Huh? Uh, I made a little yeah. Yeah, okay. different base there. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. And then the parts are printed, so you just... Mm -hmm. Scroll saw those out. Uh, some of the parts, like the parts, are pre-cut. So, so it's fairly simple. So it's a real good project to uh, what, start uh, out with. What yeah. uh, level of skill do you think you need uh, for this? Uh, is it a beginning? I would say it's oh. a beginning, but it's probably nothing for your fourth, fifth, or sixth grader, unless yeah. they have okay. some some help going along the way, especially okay. using sharp instruments and tools. Okay. Um, these are just some other detailed parts that we've made and how to set those out there. I'll put these away so we don't lose them. Right. We did bring a couple models here too just to show you what we're working on now. This is a, a European push boat and it's a, a, a push boat to use for pushing barges around on the, the big rivers in Europe. And this has a unique drive system in it. And let's just take this off. I'll tip this up so if you can kind of see it. It has what they call cycloidal drives, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's got five blades that go straight down in the water, and these are predominantly used in uh, ship handling tugs uh, around the Northwest and all over the United States, California, the East Coast. They're very maneuverable, and uh, it's part of the new technology for mm -hmm. propulsion units mm -hmm. for See all boats. this on the bottom, what, uh, what is that for, the, the brass area? The brass is just a protective cover so that if they happen to go aground or something, it protects oh, the blades. Okay. And also over there, a lot of times, they'll just back them up, especially if they're using them uh, out in salt water, mm -hmm. they'll just back them up to a, a, a mud flat and let the tide go out, and then they do work on it, and, oh. and they come back in and float like, it off again. Like the old days and the sailing ships, they used to careen right. the bottoms. Just yeah. like, huh? We'll get that and, thing out uh, of the Let's see, what was that hull? That was a, uh, was that? Partial wood and plastic? It's, right? it's a combination. It's mm -hmm. vacuformed. Mm -hmm. uh, the plastic is vacuformed. They have a, a female mold, and then they put the plastic over, they heat it, and then they stretch it into the mold, and then it cools off and it gives you the okay. form. So it saves a lot of time then for a person who wants to build a model yes, relatively fast. Yes, a lot faster. Yeah. This one has a fiberglass hull, and that is uh, using a similar process, except it takes a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And we demonstrated the, the fiberglass hulls the last show that we oh, did, okay. where you have a female mold, you put a release agent, put a gel coat, which is your finish coat, and then back that up with your resin. Uh, but the rest of the upper part there is just made out of wood. So mm -hmm. That's it's like just, this, too. Just right? like this one, yeah, okay. a combination of wood, and we'll mm -hmm. show some of these okay. materials as we All right. go along here. Whoop. Uh, Are we going to look at some of the tools now? Is that? Uh, I think yes. we better get this out. We don't want to spill this. Right. Some I don't know if you can work on that and see if you can get it open. Oh, or not. thanks. <laughs> My grip isn't any stronger than yours. Yeah. This oh. is what I call a go bag or a go box. <clears throat> and a lot of times when we're going up to uh, our place up in Allen or on a short vacation, go out to the ocean or something. I take this along so I can work on small parts as, as we get there. So basically what it contains then is just, um, these are little clamps. And we get these out at the uh, uh, wholesale store. And they're little spring clamps uh, used to hold parts together. Yeah, 
Um, also use clothes pins and that sort of thing. <clears throat> this is my Captain Jim. <laughs> Not my mid namesake. <laughs> yes, it is your mid <laughs> Jim normally comes over and uh, scrutinizes the models, and I go and scrutinize his as we build them. But this is a little scale figure that's the same scale as the model that I'm building. So that as I'm building the model, I can use this to judge whether the parts are looking uh, the same size as they should. Because a lot of times I'm not working from actual plans. I might have plans from the, mm -hmm. the builder, but I'm actually going in and, and designing the parts myself. So this is just a double check as to uh, make sure the doors are high enough so you can walk yeah, in and right. that sort that of makes thing. Sense. That's about, uh, what is it, 3 8 scale, something, something like that? Something like that, yeah. 3 eighths of an inch eight equals inch one foot. Right. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, adding a figure to the model really adds uh, life to the model. It uh, gives you some scale of uh, how it compares to human beings. Oh, okay. You know, some of the models <clears throat> that I use uh, do that, I do that, and uh, get a lot of comment about uh, the difference between a model without a figure and one with a figure. Right, right. Um, this is just another, another one of the knives. This is the Exacto number 11, uh, the most commonly used knife. And like I say, uh, if you're working around children, I like this one because and even working around my, my own workbench, every once in a while you get excited, it rolls off, and you make a grab for it, and guess which end you grab. So <laughs> keep the uh, Band-Aids handy too. These are uh, little parts that I pick up from my friendly dentist. And when she is uh, going to throw these away, I just have her throw them in the box and I pick them up. Yep. These are little tools. If you ever had your, your teeth cleaned, these are the tools they use. Yes, and they'll just give them to you. They're apparently Good some steel. type of shelf life, but yes. there's more life in it for the modelers. Uh, we just take and uh, grind them down a little bit, make little chisels, mm -hmm. make little uh, mm -hmm. parts mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's always nice to have a, a pair of tweezers. You notice that tweezer, it yep. grabs rather than and pushing. It's, yeah. yeah, it's it's a little I different see, from the regular the, tweezers. I see you had the other style there. And there's the other style. Uh, this is a pen vise, and basically what it does, it holds uh, uh, small uh, drills that you can drill small holes in your material. I noticed this one, it has a swivel base on it too, which is kind of makes it handy because you can put it in your palm and actually spin it like a drill real easy. Right. So if you're looking for that tool, if you can find one that has a spinning head like that, it makes the act of doing the drilling much easier and more accurate. Yeah. And you can hold it like this too with your finger right. up there and turn it. Right. Right. Uh, the thing is that most people don't realize is that it comes with four different chucks. Uh, when I worked in the industry, it was surprising that we had people in the model shop there that had these for years but didn't realize they have four different sizes in the end. Mm -hmm. So it compensates for the size of drill that you have. Looks like you uh, have so two of them, right? You have two tool. of them there and then there's okay. two at the other end. So uh, okay. I was always surprised there were people that had yeah. them and always said, well, they're only good for a certain size drill, but you mm -hmm. show them that, oh, yeah. well. Okay. Oh, Kadok, what else we got here? Careful what I stick This looks like a suture. Yeah. Is that what they call this? Yeah. A suture? This is kind of a handy uh, device. Hemostat. Hemostat, <clears throat> that's correct. Yep. But it has the little teeth in it that you can grab a hold of something and lock it in place, which makes it handy. There's extra number 11 blades. Um, if you're working with wood, <clears throat> these are just uh, uh, small uh, tools like you might use in a wood shop. This is a little special uh, plane and it uses regular double edge razor blades in it. Very good for soft woods. Uh, these are little spoke, spoke shapes. Plane, yeah. And they have different backs on them. I'll set it out in the front here. Some have a concave, some have a convex, and then some of them have a flat surface. They call it a spoke shape for mm -hmm. a reason. Yeah. yeah, they used to yeah. use them for making sp uh, yeah. spokes for wheels. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there's another small uh, uh, plane that's very handy to use for, for modeling work. Uh, here's a couple more. I'm kind of like, uh, what is it, Tim Allen on the no, tool yeah. show? I'm a I'm tool, <laughs> tool alcoholic. Never have or, enough tools. Yeah, addict here, tool addict. There, I guess it is. Mm -hmm. If there's a tool out there, I figure I might need it someday, so I usually buy it. So, yeah. 
And that's, you know, another thing is that as you get into this particular hobby, uh, as you go along, you start to pick up these other things. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to have them. Like I say, you can start out with a, a basic model with just a basic knife and glue and a good, a good beginner's kit, right. and then go from there. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you, there are a lot of uh, basic tools right here that are easy to find and relatively inexpensive, like these dentist tools. Right. All you have to do is ask for those things, and it's a good quality tool will last the rest of your life. And you, you have to be careful. I know a friend of mine, he was uh, building up three vacuform models for his three grandchildren, mm -hmm. and that was his first start into models. And now he known, owns nine models, and uh, the grandchildren don't have any of them yet. Oh. And he says, the only way they're going to get them is they're going to have to bid at them as a state sale. So he's going to keep them for a while. Okay, let's open this up then. And this is just a little one Now, of those what did you call bags. that box? I call it a go box. Geo. Go, go mean, box. Mean just grab when I go, go someplace, huh? I yeah. grab it. It's okay. got a lot of my okay. things in here. Right. Um, it's one of the, actually, it's one of the three go boxes because you'll find as you go along, you have one for your tools, you have one for adhesives, and you have another one for paints. Oh, okay. So you kind of keep them all separated. <coughs> Here's some more of the tools that we use. Perfect. These are just small pliers. Yeah. Don't know if you can see those yeah. up there, Steve. Yeah. Um, you always need a set of uh, uh, little small files. Yeah, they, so that looks like an files. expensive item. Actually, they aren't. Oh, Again, okay. if you look at your local wholesale distributor yeah. uh, in the Tri-Cities here. <laughs> okay. uh, you find these on sale quite often. I okay. almost have a running account out there. Uh, I need something for measuring. This is just overall measurements just from okay. your We're all familiar box with and that one. Uh, protractor for doing angle work for transferring uh, okay. angles onto your work, work piece. Okay. Well, this is an interesting little tool right here. This, yeah. That thing right there, that's odd. It looks like something from a science fiction. <laughs> uh, probably what these are, um, these are some that I just made myself. They're uh -huh. tubing benders. Yeah, okay. And uh, here's a couple of them. When you're bending tubing, uh, you have to be careful because as you start to bend the tubing, then it wants to flatten out. Great. So what you do with this is, I don't know if I have a piece in here or not, but uh, you take the piece of tubing then and you put it in the slot. And then you just take and push it around like, mm -hmm. well, this isn't wide enough. Right. But it's, yeah. 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 Uh, but the idea is a slot. Just put that in the slot like that. And then if it's mature, you just and, bend it right bends, on around. It bends a smooth radius without crimping. It puts a, yeah, it puts yeah. a smooth radius into it without crimping. Yeah. And okay. that's kind of hard to do, especially with aluminum. Right. Somebody builds, uh, you know, the dioramas of... Uh, Industrial parks, you know, they bend a lot of tube because there's yes. a lot of piping. Yes, a, and now yeah. there's, and of course, scissors. Yeah. So if the mothers out there start missing some well, things, yes. the father's missing some things, <laughs> they better look at the, the model go box. Better take <clears throat> care. Some of these scissors are very nice, huh? Yeah. And mom's sewing kit. <laughs> and this is just a scriber, and this is a scriber that I picked up from the plexiglass people when we worked with plexiglass. Okay. You can use this to scribe, and then you just break mm -hmm. the edge. Mm -hmm. And this works very good with the styrene when you're working for the vacuum form models mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. It also is good for scribing in on models when you have planking. When you build a solid model and you want to show the planking, you put a little bit of a um, uh, uh, thing there to hold it and then yeah. go from there. Yeah. We're getting high sign here, so we'll just kind of go through these things. These are some of the materials that we use. I just take the supply along. Yeah. Uh, styrene, plastic, uh, uh, round material. We have flat bra brass stock. We have aluminum stock. So these are all used in Are they pretty making... uh, easy to find? Yes, your local hobby store has all of these. Okay. <coughs> you use your imagination, uh, you know, uh, what you want to use these things for. Well, I know, I know a lot of craft people use the same materials that we right. do as modelers. Right. Yeah. These are indispensable. <laughs> the old age device. The old yeah. age. <laughs> but you'd be surprised. Uh, even my younger friends start using them now when you're working on small parts. Oh, it really okay. makes it easier on your eyes because you just put these over your head and drop them down and it magnifies. Yeah. Yeah. And I have three different sizes. Yeah, I use them on my end scale models. And Always nice to have really a calculator. We're yes. doing calculations when you're going from one scale to another, measuring parts. Um, circle cutter. Okay. 
Those are a little more sophisticated yeah. tools you probably wouldn't use. Do you find that you make a lot of your own tools because you can't find something that's a lot of the times suits, yes that suits your purpose. Yeah, a lot of the times yeah. you end up making your own own little tool. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're just little uh, tools made out of wood. Well, These are just some uh, fixtures and stuff that I picked up for sailboats. Uh, it used to be a uh, like you, we used to be, you know, yeah. scratch builders uh -huh. to the end. But now, if they make a part, oh yes, I, usually, I know. Uh, I have parts that I've had since I was well, let's say about thirty years. I have parts. <laughs> These are some more detailed parts. I don't know. You can see those or not. Diane, can you see those over there? These are just uh, some more parts that you can buy. Uh, there's two or three companies that furnish them. Uh, some of these, uh, I made the master, and uh, we have a fellow in Australia that makes HO railroad things, and mm -hmm. he casts the parts up for us, too. Uh, oh, is there anything down at the bottom of that box that you want to see? We're uh, about okay. out of time here, I We're think. about uh, out of time. But uh, this is just, this is, uh, well, the collection of tools you see right here, you could probably build most of these models that you see. Matter of fact, you could build them all. We didn't show his little saw. Well, that's his glue kit. That's, and that's just a, a glue that's kit. another story. That's just another story. <laughs> because yeah. uh, when we first started, you know, we just used wood glue and tight bond and that sort of thing. Yeah. Now you have the super glues. You have the super thin. You have the medium, the heavy duty filling type super glues. You have the five minute epoxies, the ten minute epoxies, the thirty minute epoxies. You have mm -hmm. the uh, uh, materials that you use to put on your wood that go mm -hmm. into the wood and mm -hmm. saturate the wood mm -hmm. so you can mm -hmm. finish it. Mm -hmm. um, you have filler materials that are polyester. Uh, so these are all things that you okay. end up using. Okay. Uh, those glues, uh, looks like you have quite a few of them there. Uh, do they have a shelf life on them? You they have definitely have a shop, yeah. shelf oh, life okay. on them. And I can so probably show you a couple of these that be. are filled. So it's yes. wise to get little ones if you're not right. sure what you're going right. to do. Right. Yeah. If you're not doing much work, get the smaller ones. And uh, Okay. Well, thank you, Jerry. And well, thank uh, you we just, we just a, a cursory discussion of everything that we have here. And now the uh, best thing to do is get a member, uh, get a uh, associated with a club and yes. they'll show you how to use a lot of these yep. tools. Uh -huh. And uh, talk to your people at the local hobby stores too. Yeah. Okay. And again, don't let this discourage you. This is, you know, 40 years accumulation. Yeah. So okay. uh, you don't have to worry about starting out with all these things. Okay. Well, thank you. And thanks again for watching uh, Just Kidding Around. And I'm sure Diane will be here during the next show. She did a, a uh, yeoman's job on the camera number three, and Steve is over here, and camera one, and Tom is doing everything in the control room, and it looks like it went off fairly well, and I'm Jim Elder, and I'll see you again. And next time, we'll make sure we can open the... Oh, yeah, right. <laughs>